Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' holy and blessed name. What a beautiful day it is to be in Jesus. Amen and amen. Brother Tom is with you here, and this is a ministry of Jesus Christ. And today, a few thoughts on some words spoken by Jesus. And they are profound words, to say the least. And the first couple of sets of words are words no one wants to ever hear spoken about them. What I meant. And then we'll tie it all together with some words that we really do desire to hear the Lord say. What I meant. On the night of the Last Supper, Jesus lets the disciples know that he's going to be betrayed by one of the twelve. And the question of who, you know, and he says this, and he answered and said unto them, it is one of the 12 that dippeth with me in the dish. And they were sharing the bread and it would be Judas Iscariot who would dip his bread in with Jesus at that time, indicating that it would be Judas Iscariot that would be the betrayer of Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, just 30 pieces of silver fulfilling a prophecy, but he did it anyway. But Jesus says this of him, the son of man indeed goeth as it is written of him. Jesus does have to go to the cross and be crucified, die and be buried and raised from the dead. That has to be, that's the covenant. That's the price for our salvation for the forgiveness of our sin, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, and amen, his death upon the cross, the only price that can be paid for our sin. There is no other, there's no other way. So Jesus must go to the cross and die. But he says this, but woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. He says that when there's an exclamation point at the end of that sentence. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. That part of the sentence, by the way, there's a comma and then you know, the exclamation point and it goes, it had been better if that man had never been born. These are words that no one would want to hear from Jesus the Christ. It would have been better if you had never been born. Crushing words. For those of us in the body of Christ today, we know how powerful this is and what it means. If today you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, know this, to hear this kind of word, harsh indeed. But Judas had a choice and he made it. He chose to reject rather than to receive and believe. For that he would betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And when he realized what he had done, he would go out and hang himself. Yes. In uh, <clears throat> Matthew, let's take a look at a couple of other things here real quick. In Matthew, 18, or no, excuse me, 11, Matthew 11, Matthew 11. Now he's doing some preaching and teaching and he begins to upbraid the cities where in most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. And 
some serious words. Had cities of the Old Testament which were in deep trouble <laughs> come the judgment saw and heard what these cities had seen and heard, surely they would have repented. And he gets to one that we'll use because you'll all know this name. You'll all know this city. Mm -hmm. And thou, O Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, Sodom, it would have remained unto this day, implying they'd have repented. Mighty works, what were they seeing? That Jesus says, is, if, you, if these other cities had seen this, if Sodom had seen and heard these things, they would still be here. Well, if you go back to Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, which is really the setup for the Sermon on the Mount, because these people, these, this vast multitude is now following Jesus around. And the Sermon on the Mount is a response to why are you following? If you truly want to be a follower of Jesus, hear this. And he goes into the Sermon on the Mount. But the reason they're following... And Jesus went all about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. All the healings that we read about in, in, in scripture, lame, healed, blind eyes, see. That's why they were following. That's why he finds the convenient place to sit and be heard and teach them what it is to be a true follower of Jesus Christ. But the cities, now individuals had received, of course. But as a whole, they, were, they rejected him. They did not receive him. It would have still been. And at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Our hope of knowing the Father, our hope of being saved, is in Jesus. But it's Jesus who reveals to us the Father. You can't know the Father if he hasn't been revealed to you by the Son. Jesus Christ. You can claim to know him, think you know him, learn about him, all those things. But until he's revealed to you by the Son, you do not know him. Come unto me, all ye that labor, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Yes, indeed. Ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Compared to the religious system, the laws and ordinances and statutes of the Pharisees, which had gone so far awry from the true law of God that they weren't even the true law of God anymore. Heavy laden. They laid the burdens of these things upon the people. Just said, 
Come to me. Learn of me. That you might know the truth. And know this. My burden is light in comparison to the heavy laden bricks of the pile on you by the world and by religious systems and religious leaders. For they know me not. Come to me, come to Jesus and know the truth that we might hear the words we do desire to hear when Jesus comes and finds us doing those things which we ought to be doing, not by our might, not by our power, but by his spirit, by the very spirit of God, the very spirit of Christ who dwells in us. For we have surrendered all, surrendered our lives to him 100%, 100%. It is now Christ who lives out through us. He is the one who does them all. Yes, we benefit from them. We'll even be rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ for having done them. When it was actually he himself, his spirit doing it through us. Yes, sold out. Believing in what? That Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. That he came, bled, died, was buried, and raised the third day. Jesus is alive. And because he lives, we may live also. And why he did all that is because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. And all in this case does mean all. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God and are in need of a savior, need of being justified. And we are justified, justified freely by his grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Not of works. There are also two other groups of people talked about in, in this. In one group, When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. Another group. But Lord, when, when did we see you? Hungry and thirsty and naked and did not come unto thee. Because you did it not unto the least of these. You did it not unto me. To those who had done it. Amen. To those who had not, he's going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. The religious ones, the ones who have shaped God into their own image of a God, not the true God, much like the Pharisees had done with their ordinances and regulations and making them self-important and special and see what we do, see what I've done. False, false religious beliefs and legalism and all the other things that burden, that are heavy burdens. Not the true. They haven't truly given their lives to Christ. They're believing in some other way when there is no other way. It's 100% Jesus saved by him for he is the way, the truth, and the life and no man can come to the Father but by Jesus. <clears throat> truth and it's glorious and beautiful. And it is the only way to hear the words we truly desire to hear. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Why? Because we've trusted him. Surrendered all. And it's Jesus, all Jesus, wonderful, sweet, beautiful Jesus. 
So today, know for sure, is it Jesus? Truly, do you know that it's not by works? There's no amount of good deeds or works or things that you can do that will save you, only Jesus. You can't buy it. You can build hospitals and put his name on them. But if it isn't in Jesus, it's not going to buy you into heaven. You can't buy your way in. You can't steal it. It's not something that you can sneak and steal for yourself and when you get there, go see? can't borrow it. Sorry, I can't loan you my salvation so you can get into heaven. It doesn't work like that. It's all Jesus. Always Jesus. Always his truth, his way. And in that we have life. We hear the beautiful words of well done, no good and faithful servant. Why? Because we have trusted in Jesus 100% for 100%. And all in Jesus' name to the glory of God our Father. And by the power and might of his spirit that dwells in us. The very spirit that worketh in us. Unto him be glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, both now and forever. Oh, amen. The beautiful truth, his glory in the church now, by Christ Jesus. Yes, indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Better know where you're going and how to get there. And it's all Jesus. Amen.